Welcome to this video about an intervention study in a labor ward in Tanzania about prevention of perineal trauma and following complications. Thank you very much for inviting me to speak at this 12th Global Women's Health Pediatrics and Nursing Summit. My name is Julie. I am a doctor from Denmark. I have conducted a research project on a labor ward in Tanzania. It's called Perineal Trauma following vaginal delivery in a low-income area, a criterion-based audit. We often fail when we try to make a difference in developing countries like Tanzania. And how can that be? Imagine that you're standing in a room with nothing else than an empty bed and a woman in labor. That is pretty much the setting I arrived to in Tanzania. When we are doing interventions in developing countries, we have to take many aspects into considerations, such as local conditions and guidelines, the resources available at the study site, educational level, and so on. Therefore, our study method had to be specially designed. Our study was designed as a criterion-based audit, and that may be some of the answer to why my intervention was successful. Trauma to the birth canal, also called perineal lacerations, are very frequent when giving birth. An estimated 70 to 85% of women sustain some degree of trauma to the perineum during childbirth. Trauma to the perineum are divided into four categories. First degree uh, tears are limited to the superficial skin or vaginal mucosa. Second degree tears involve perineal muscles, but with intact anal sphincter. Third degree tears involves the anal sphincter. And fourth degree tears involve both the anal sphincter and rectal mucosa. Vaginal childbirth and severe perineal trauma of third and fourth degree are important risk factors for anal and urinary incontinence. Previous studies in low-income countries have demonstrated that anal incontinence may follow vaginal delivery in up to 14%. Anal incontinence often leads to limitations of daily activities, restrictions in social life, poor self-esteem and sexual dysfunction, all of which remain largely silent problems in our, our society. But these lacerations can be prevented. Perineal support is a technique developed to prevent perineal trauma at childbirth while the head is crowning. The thumb and index finger support the perineum while the other hand slows the delivery of the head. Previous studies from the Scandinavian countries have demonstrated that this technique is effective to reduce perineal trauma. The objective of this study was to assess the impact of an educational intervention on prevention of perineal trauma by perineal support and following complications, especially anal incontinence. To our knowledge, this has never been described in low-income countries. One way to investigate the impact of introducing new treatments is the use of the method criterion-based audit. Criterion-based audit is a process that seeks to improve quality of care through systematic review of care uh, against agreed-on criteria followed by implementation of change. In step 1, audit uh, criteria for best realistic practice regarding prevention, diagnosis and management of perineal trauma were established considering the resources available. This was done in cooperation with staff. The criteria for perineal trauma were established from evidence-based guidelines. In step two, baseline data were collected on a daily basis. I examined vaginally delivered women with a gestational age of at least 28 weeks for perineal trauma. In case of perineal trauma, the degree of laceration was determined. Furthermore, I observed a sample of 100 deliveries before and after the intervention for practice of perineal support and management of perineal trauma. A 
Three months follow-up was done by telephone interviews to assess the proportion of women with complications to perineal lacerations, such as perineal pain and anal incontinence. Step three, the intervention is explained by this figure. The intervention was targeted both staff and women after giving birth. The staff received practical training and perineal support and theoretical training and diagnosis of perineal lacerations and treatment of complications. This was done in a three-hour training session. Women were told about pelvic floor exercises, incontinence, and the importance of hygiene. This was done daily. This together resulted in better treatment from the staff and better care from the women themselves. After the intervention, the same observations were done again. These observations were compared to baseline data and presented to the staff in step five. And now for the results. Before the training intervention of staff, perineal support as trained for this study was not performed at the hospital. After the intervention, perineal support was observed correctly at 78.6% of the deliveries. Three times as many women were entirely free of birth-related lacerations after the intervention. Second-degree lacerations that involves the perineal muscles decreased by 26% from 50.7 to 37.5%. The incidence of third- and fourth-degree lacerations that involves the anal sphincter was reduced from 6.6 to 3.4%, however not significantly. We saw no significant improvement in the proportion of women who reported incontinence, but 72% fewer women had perineal pain three months after delivery. So to sum up the results very short, perineal support was introduced and used in a large proportion of the cases. In the study period, birth-related lacerations decreased and thus more women could give birth without long-term pain after their delivery. The criterion-based order process showed to be flexible and makes adaption possible to context and available resources. Relevant staff was involved throughout the process and that resulted in valuable mapping of suboptimal care. This provided a strong basis for tailoring and effective intervention. The selected order criteria were simple and clear, making the data collection feasible. You don't need anything else than your hands to do perineal support, which doesn't cost any money or can break like most other equipment. Together this made the intervention feasible in low-income setting. Based on these findings, we think that criterion-based audit can be used to improve quality of care in low-income settings. Regarding the impact of sustainability, further long-term studies are needed. Thank you very much for listening to my video. I also want to give a special thanks to all co-workers from Kilimanjaro Christian Medical Center who were a big help during this whole project. Also, thanks to all the co-authors. I hope you will enjoy the rest of the video conference where we share our knowledge, even though it is not possible for us to meet in person.